Good morning. Happy Friday, August 28th. Welcome to Ham Radio 2.0. Thank you for joining me today. Hope everyone is having a good weekend. Special uh, reach out to those in the Southeast Texas and Louisiana for the Hurricane Laura that came in a couple days ago. Hopefully you guys are staying safe down there. So let's hop into the video today. Generally on Fridays, I'll do a shopping video for sales specials throughout wherever I might find stuff. Today we're going to do something a little bit different because I suspect that the video next week for Labor Day will show some really good sales. I've already reached out to several vendors to try to get their list of what they might be offering for sale so I can start putting something together and getting ready for a video a week from today. So today we're going to talk about antennas. This, of course, is my my sales website where I sell merchandise for the store. Recently added t-shirts for 741 Ham Radio, Rob N1NUG, who's a member of the YouTubers Bunch. You can come in here and do that. But on to the antennas. So I get a lot of questions about what antenna I'm using while I'm doing POTA, activations and these antennas oh hey look at that look he's got some really cool videos on this site hi hi <laughs> oh it's still early um so this antenna right here this is the antenna that i used on my first three or four or five different parks on the air activations it is a 31 foot flagpole antenna um Actually, this says 32 feet. I always tell people it's 31. Maybe 32 is correct. I guess he would know. He makes the thing. It has this device in the bottom of it that is an auto-tuner. It's a matching device. He's got a, actually a patent on this. So it takes your signal, and it will auto-match 10 to 80 meters with no tuner. So if you're running up to 100 watts single sideband. I think it only handles like 30 or 40 watts FT8. I found that one out the hard way in a live stream I did. <laughs> but if you're doing single sideband CW, it works uh, great. It has, it's easy to deploy, easy to set up. You just run a wire up through the flagpole, connect it to the matching unit at the bottom, connect your coax, plug it into your radio and go. Uh, there's several different mounting options which I've shown in my videos. But as far as ease and quick deployment, this is one of the ones that I use for POTA due to the fact that it is so easy to deploy. He also has other products, stealth antennas for those of you in HOAs. He's got some really thin eave mount antennas. I've seen these in person. This is a go anywhere antenna that he makes, 67 foot of wire. This is to made to be mounted from the eave of your house 60 uh, again 67 foot of wire and it's fairly thin and not noticeable it's just silver threaded wire so you mount it from the eave of your house and most people can't see it so one of the stealth antenna options he has but TN07 Engineering out of TN is for Tennessee. These are all made in the USA products. He's out of Tennessee, obviously. And I met Bob a few times at uh, ham fests in the past and started using his flagpole a while back. And they are good performers, ease of setup and whatnot. We'll move over here to the DX Commander. Now, I have one of these antennas myself. Uh, that I have not built yet. People like to tease me about that, and that's okay. Uh, and But I tell you what, man, all the folks who use this antenna cannot shut up about it. Uh, K8MRD uses the antenna. AE4MQ uses the antenna. Several other the guys in the YouTubers bunch use it. He's got three or four versions of it. He's got an Expedition version, which is a easier for field deployable. He's got a Classic version. This is the one that I have, Classic HF Multiband Vertical System. This is the one that I have right here that's still in the box. I need to that I'm going to, I'm planning on building it in an upcoming episode. So that is that is coming. It's just I've got a I've got a stack of stuff to be built and done videos for. So Soda Tactical Travel Expedition Antenna. 
bare bones complete 10 meter multiband HF vertical. Three element triangular array. Four band vertical. He's got several options here. Some of these options are just different ways to configure your classic DX commander. This four square right here is a way to put the classic DX commander together to where you can build a four square out of it. Or out of four of them, maybe. <laughs> but DX Commander, great, uh, great fan dipole type vertical antenna. Different options. And um, you can see right here, uh, he's on holiday from August 24th for two weeks. So at the time of this recording, he is on holiday. But you can find many, many of his videos on YouTube. He is one of the youtubers bunch guys that joins us for our monthly meetings and he gets on the air he does live streams on the air he'll just get on 80 meters as you can see right here and just call cq and live stream it and he's generally using his own antenna when he does that so dx commander really great option for those of you wanting to reach out to the world via hf moving over to na4rr hex beams those of you looking for a hex beam this is one that I recommend. Again, this is one that I'm working on a build on myself, and um, I've actually got the antenna partially almost all the way put together, and the reason I don't have it up yet is because I haven't put my tower up yet. This is another one of those projects I was talking about where um, I have the antenna, but I don't have the tower up yet, so it is not deployed. But you will see that in an upcoming video as well. So you can go in, if you just Google NA4RR hex beam, uh, the, hebs, uh, the I'm sorry, the website is k4hex.com. And again, all of these links will be in the description below. But you can get, uh, here's an eHAM review. They had a write-up in QST a few years back. I can't remember exactly when it is. I did, uh, I, I did look that up at one point, but I forgot to click on that before the video started this morning. But this is a complete six-band antenna, 6, 10, 12, 15, 17, and 20 hex beam. And here's your eHAM review right here, and they probably display this eHAM review. It is 4.9 out of 5 stars overall rating right there. So you've got an excellent, excellent designed hex beam antenna, NA4RR. And they're a little bit lower price. You know, it's only $600. 540 plus 60 dollars shipping i've seen some of these hex beams get up to 800 a thousand 1200 bucks depending on what size they you know there's different sizes and whatnot you can read about this right here he's got a smaller footprint than some which is one reason i grabbed it but it is a great option if you're looking for a multi-band beam antenna with a smaller footprint than like a huge tri-band. Those, those tri-band antennas are nice. I've got a couple of those as well that I've used for various things. But of course, they, didn't, they, they do not include the work bands, 12 and 17, and they generally don't include six either. So you've got 10, 15, 20 meter with a much bigger antenna, or you've got six bands with a smaller footprint. So it depends on what you're trying to go for there. NA4R. NA4RR hex beam. When we went on um, Soda Expedition at Mount Pacifico last November, uh, Matt AE4MQ brought one of these soda beams. These are made in Europe. They are out of, yeah, he's right here. He's in the UK. Mass, Field. I'm probably saying that wrong right here. <laughs> But these are overseas in Europe, and you can order them online and get them shipped to you. This is something that's on my list of things to grab once I build the antennas I have right now that I haven't built yet. <laughs> but these uh, these soda beams are really great. They're easy to deploy. They're made uh, for portable operation. They break down very easily and set up very quickly. And they perform incredibly well. We had really good luck with the one that we set up at the Soda Expedition last week. Or I'm sorry, last year. 
and uh, K8MRD did a video with Matt, AE4MQ, on a park activation they did two or three weeks ago, and at the time of this recording, and they did they used this soda beam for one of the activations they did. So, if you want something that's small and portable and multi-banded, this is a three-band portable right here. He's got a four-band right here. Uh, they come in these bags here, so they just throw them in the pack and go. Really good option for portable antenna operations and multi-banded. Coming over here to Spider Beam. Now, these, these guys I actually have not used. Um, I know a couple people who have used them, and they get really good reviews on the different ones they have you see they've got a there's a tri-band right there there's a tri-band heavy duty specially reinforced yagi for permanent installation this is a durable lightweight yagi for portable operation there's a five band and a five band heavy duty i'm gonna click on that and see what that looks like yeah so that's not very l large pictures on there but Spider Beams, if you, uh, again, if you go Google and read Eham reviews and read Google reviews, they get some really good traction and good feedback on their products. And there's a, ooh, see that right there would be interesting to me. Spider Beam 30, 12, and 17. I would enjoy that. Because the fan dipole I'm currently deploying does not have any of those three bands so 30 12 and 17 would be cool bands to have if you're wanting to work the work band you know 30 meters is fun if you're working cw or ft8 17 meters is always a good band 12 meters when it's up is fun which is not often or at least it hadn't been often lately but that might be a good option for you if you're looking for some sort of beam so spiderbeam.com this is a new website i just recently found i don't have any experience with these either but they were referred to me by a friend of mine <clears throat> in our discord chat uh amateur radio supplies.com and these are some dipole kits here six meter dipole 10 12 20 there's a 40 meter dipole kit. You can click on that. And these are just simple center fed dipole kits is what they are. Uh, this website has more than just antenna stuff. Coax switches, connectors, grounding and lightning, power supplies, station accessories, tools and construction. Let's see what uh, Wyndham's. These are off-center fed dipoles. Wyndham's are great for... Nope, don't want that. Wyndham's are great for multi-band. Uh, whether you... Some of them require a tuner, some, one, some of them do not, depending on which Wyndham it is. You can easily get a five or six band Wyndham off-center fed dipole that does not require a tuner, and you can work five or six bands with it. So, different options there build your own dipole here's for you guys who want to build your own stuff build your own dipole pre-cut wire 80 meter dipole antenna wire right there of course you can buy you can go to home depot or lowe's and buy wire of course but if it's your first time building an antenna and you're not exactly sure how to cut it where to feed it that kind of thing see this one's pre-cut 40 meter dipole antenna wire 71 feet total, two 35 and a half foot sections of high quality number 14 black jetted flex weave antenna wire trimmed to your exact needs. And then you can just put it together, put it up, see how it works. And then once you build your first antenna, then you can go buy, go buy a big spool of wire at Home Depot and experiment with different options. 160 meters would be fun. 160 meters by band. 160 meter reduced length sloper. Holy cow. I wonder how far up that goes. 
The short and 160 meter slope are an ideal compromise Nintendo when you activate top band. Uh, overall length is 23 inches. Huh? Schedule 40. Oh, that's. Oh, okay. That's the that's the PVC at the bottom. Includes 70 foot of wire, terminated with porcelain insulators. Grounding approximately. Do you want? To know? If you have 45 feet, you can be on top band with this fantastic reduced link sloper antenna. The feed point of this antenna needs to be up about 45 feet. Okay, that was my question. How high do you have to hang it? <laughs> 45 feet, which is probably going to be somewhere near the top of the tower that I've been wanting to put up for two years, two or three years. So guess what? Maybe that will be my 160 meter option for home. They've even got HT antennas and uh, NMO mount antennas. A lot of different options there. Last place I'll show you today is my own kit.co site. I've mentioned this before in the past, although I don't think I've ever done it on this shopping video. So kit.co forward slash KC5HWB. I've got different items broken down into different categories here. Here's one for Elecraft. Here's one for the video gear that I use. This one's field day supplies from last year. Stuff that I use there. This is items that I've reviewed. This one has radios I've reviewed. There's the G90 stand, bridge comm, headsets, um, power pole crimpers, Arden nodes, ID5100. And mixed throughout many of these kits are antennas. There's, there's an Abri uh, tri-band antenna and the Diamond tri-band HT antenna. Now, I haven't technically reviewed this in brief, this, well, I have, but I haven't. <laughs> Let me explain. I've made a video about tri-band antennas that no one has seen yet, that I have not released yet, so that will be coming. You'll be seeing that on a later episode. I just added this kit the other day because I was being asked about some of the tri-band HT radios that I reviewed and put on YouTube recently. And I'm like, you know what? I'll just put them all in a kit. So all of these, the this one right here is the same one. This is the UV82 tri-band. That is, uh, actually that one's a tri-power. That was a little bit different. This is the one, this is this one on eBay is the one I reviewed last week, a couple weeks ago. This is one that I found on Amazon. That's the same model, but this one's tri-power instead of dual power this one's a the one in the middle here's an eight watt the one on the left is a five watt this uv9s i reviewed a while back got a lot of really good feedback on that and uh, still get questions on that video so and these are the main two antennas that i use on my tri-band hts the diamond srh 320a which i use in my kenwood d74 and the btech authentic nagoya na320 na320a tri-band this one's got an SMA female mount on the antenna itself. This one's got an SMA, SMA male mount on the antenna itself. So depending on which radio you have, there's one for each application. 73, guys. Really appreciate you guys watching today. Again, next week, um, Labor Day. Hopefully have some good specials and good deals to show you for that extended weekend everyone have a good weekend for this weekend on august 28th 2020 73